Well, hello again. Let's take a look at some more verbs. Today we're going to have a look at what we call liquid verbs. These are verbs that uh, have stems ending in what we call a liquid consonant. Uh, in the present tense, these are no problem at all. Uh, in the aorist tense, they're not really much of a problem. In the future tense, they can be challenging. Uh, just a fair warning. You can see more of the challenges if you take my full course at potterschool.org or at alts.edu. Now let's meet these liquid consonants. What in, a, in the world is a liquid consonant? This is a consonant that you could hum or sing. For instance, uh, let's try this. You see, you can hum or sing on those consonants. You can't do that with some other types of consonants. Uh, for instance, a sibilant like S, you can't change your pitch or anything. Well, yeah, so those are liquid consonants, and some verbs have stems ending with liquid consonants. What's the problem with the future tense, then? The Greeks thought it really sounded strange to put a sigma after a liquid consonant. They just thought, oh, that's the weirdest sound in the world. So while you might not mind going ls or ms, or ns, or ers. Uh, the Greeks really didn't like it. And the solution which came out was a form of contraction. And that's exactly where the problem shows up in the future tense of liquid verbs. Here are some of them. The, the verb me to be is just a little bit odd in the future. Um, but uh, it's a handy place to study it because we're getting some irregular futures. So there we go, esomai, esse, estai, esomatha, esistha, esontai. Actually, that's the verb of being acting about as regular as it ever does. The, the stem is epsilon, it's got the sigma for the sign of the future, and then it's got uh, primary ending. Now, how about the verb crino? Crino, I judge, is no problem in the present tense. Now you'll notice in the present tense, let's see if I can write it here. It's going to look like this. K, R, I with an accent, N, O. Crino like that. But notice what happens in the future tense. It doesn't become crineso or crinso. It becomes crino. You see how there's a contraction there happening. It's hidden a little bit. But what it's done is it's pulled the accent way over to the right, just as far as can be. And that's going to mean you can confuse liquid verbs for subjunctive verbs or for contract verbs. The contractions are going to be just the same as we studied with the uh, contract verbs and with the subjunctive mood. So watch the accent. Again, pronouncing words out loud when you first see them, for instance, on a word list, that tells you the verb is crino, then you're going to recognize, oh, something happened to the accent. This must be in the future tense. So we go crino, crinase, crine, crinumen, crinete, crinusi. And these are future. I will judge. You will judge. He, she, or it will judge. We will judge. You all will judge. They will judge. So the liquid consonant verbs are going to have that contraction in the future tense. The aorist is going to have a slightly different contraction, and what it's going to do is um, 
it's going to lose the sigma alpha. Just keep a, a it'll just keep the alpha. And so you'll have verbs like emena, emenes, uh, emenas, etc. And uh, it won't be pro it won't be trouble to identify. But the future tense may be a challenge. All right, keep your eyes open. You do need to know the difference between the present and the future. We'll see you another time.